question 13 of AFM from BBP division kid so this question is very important right because this question has your net present value calculations it has project duration it has sensitivity analysis and also risk and uncertainty so this question is a mixture of many things here in your investment appraisal chapter so so very good question good question to start with your net present value calculation this is the simplest uh, question i would say on how to calculate net present value because in your exam you will get a question where you have to calculate net present value so your net present value you cannot ignore it it's like a key right one is your risk management the other one is your net present value your investment appraisal right so before I go to this case study, we'll go through the requirements and see what the requirements ask us to do so that it's easy for you to work out. Part A asks then is for 15 marks, evaluate the financial acceptability of the investment in the mill and calculate and comment on the investment's duration. So there are many things which has been asked here to do. First, evaluate the financial accept acceptability. In short, they are saying you to find the net present value. This is the terms. These are the terms which are used by the examiner. They will not tell you directly to calculate net present value. They will tell you to evaluate the financial acceptability. That means they are telling you to find the net present value to see how whether it is financially acceptable or not. Right? If net present value is positive, we accept the project. It is financially acceptable. If not, then we don't. Right? Of investment in a Milan. So Milan is a new product. We'll go through that. We'll read about it in the case study and calculate and comment. So you have to do two things. First, you have to calculate. OK, and you have to comment on the investments duration, right? Your project duration, you could say just the same old investment duration or project duration. If you have forgotten how to calculate project duration, I have made a video on project duration. Also, please go and check right or maybe i will give the link in the description below you can go and check that video project duration the link will be given below in my description so you can go and check that video how to calculate project duration next part b we have which is for five marks we have calculate the percentage change this is a new this is a new type of question this question is not expected right it's a new question In short, this is a new way of testing your sensitivity analysis, right? Calculate the percentage change in the selling price required for the investment to have a zero net present value. You have to calculate the percentage change in the selling price and discuss the significance of your results. Discuss. Please don't forget about the discussion part. It's five marks. What, what is this asking you? What When do you calculate the... Uh, the change in a selling price or a cost to find the net present value is zero. That is known as your sensitivity analysis. So in short, they are asking you sensitivity analysis, right? How sensitive the selling price is before the net present falls to zero, right? Part C, discuss the non-executive director's understanding of net present value and explain the importance of other measures in providing other measures in providing data about an investment's short and long-term performance. So basically you have to give uh, other measures which gives information about the investments, short-term and long-term performance other than net present value, right? So basically they're talking about two things here. One is risk, one is uncertainty. Right? Now we can go to the case study and read it. Fernhurst. Fernhurst company is a manufacturer of mobile communication technology. It is about to launch a new communication device than Milan. So Milan is a new communication device, which its directors believe is both more technologically advanced and easier to use than devices currently offered by its rivals. Now let's go to the investment. The Milan will require a major investment in facilities. Fernhurst company's director believe that this can take place very quickly and production will be started almost immediately. Right? This is very important. Production will be started almost immediately. That means what it is without a delay right if there's a delay they will tell you 
that a production will start one year after or immediately right so this is starting immediately furnace company expects to sell 132,500 units of melon in the first year they are giving you the sales volume to find the sales you need the volume right so here they are giving you that sales volume okay so 100 and units sales volume and this sales volume again this is for the first year is expected to increase by 20 percent in year 2 and 30 percent in year 3 and then be the same in year 4 as year 3 as the product reaches the end of its useful life that means this product is for how many years four years four years right this investment is for four years and they are telling in year two it will increase by 20% in year two, 30% in year three and year four. So 30% and be the same in year four as year three. That means 30% in year three, the same figure will be used in year four also, right? It is very important how you interpret the sentence. Here, most of the candidate could go wrong also, right? When you read the sentence very fast in one line, you might get confused. You might you might be thinking that the year force figure is not given that percentage how to get it you will get confused so read it slowly and try to understand it right 30 percent in year three and then be the same in year four as year three that means 30 percent in year four also right 20 percent 30 percent 30 percent as the product reaches end of its useful life the initial selling price in year one is expected to be 100 per unit so selling price in year one is 100 per unit before increasing with the rate of inflation annually before increasing with the inflation annually that means this 100 is before inflation right and we have inflation we need to we need to have the inflation we need to put that inflation there increase that by the inflation inflation will be, is given to you now let's go to the second para the variable cost of each unit of course sales minus variable cost is your profit right so your variable cost of each unit is expected to be 43.68 in year one so variable cost is 43 of each unit in year one rising by the rate of inflation in subsequent years annually so this also will rise by inflation fixed costs are expected to be 900,000 in year one fixed cost 900,000 year one rising by the rate of inflation is so a this also will increase by inflation fixed cost and variable cost and sales all those three figures will increase by inflation right we will see later the inflation is given down okay so now the initial investment in non-current assets is expected to be 16 million 16 million six zeros means it's a million so 16 million dollar initial investment 16 million fun has company will also need to make an immediate investment of 1000 uh, 1 million 25 1.25 million right in working capital working capital this is an immediate investment but the working capital will increase annually at the start of each of years two to four at this start not year one it will start from year two to four by the inflation rate will increase annually by the working capital and is fully recoverable at the end of the project's life it is recoverable at the end what is recoverable working capital furnace company will also incur one of marketing expenditure of 1.5 million one of marketing expenditure so one of marketing expenditure of 1.5 post inflation after the launch of milan the marketing expenditure can be assumed to be made at the end of year one end of year one marketing expenditure and be a tax allowable expense it's very important that you know it's a tax allowable expense or not now let's go to the some other information okay next para furnace company space annually uh, pays the company tax on profits at an annual rate of 25% so tax is 25% tax is payable this is where this they will give you this is an assumption right there are three assumptions about tax one of this is this in the exam you will be clearly given the assumptions which are you are paying the tax so you don't have to worry about it tax is payable in the year that the tax liability arises thank god this makes your work very easy 
So tax is payable in the year tax liability arises. Same year. Tax allowable depreciation is available at 20% on the investment in non current assets on a reducing balance basis. So TAD tax allowable depreciation is 20% on reducing balance basis. A balancing, okay. Sorry for this thing. It came when I copy pasted it, but uh, we'll be able to read the sentence. A balancing adjustments will be available in year four. Yes. Right. The re realizable value of the investment at the end of year four. The so realizable value of investment at end of year four is expected to be zero. The expected annual rate of inflation in the country in which the furnace company is located is 4% in year one and 5% in year two to five. That means two, three, four. 5% only. Only in year one is 4%. So inflation is 4% in year one and 5%. Applicable cost of capital for this investment appraisal is 11%. Why they give the cost of capital? That's your discounting factor. You're discounting it by 11%. Right? Let me write a discount factor. They will give you this whenever you have to find your net present value. And remember one thing when the cost of capital right when you have to calculate the net present value you always need cost of capital because you need that discounting matter otherwise how will you discount in case you are not given the cost of capital you need to find that cost of capital they will give you they will give you the cost of equity market risk premium risk free rate and all you have to use your capm and you have to find your cost of equity and then back right you have to find that cost of capital and then discount it. We'll solve those type of questions also where we first have to find that cost of capital and then using that capital we are discounting, right? Other calculations. So furnace companies finance data has indicated that besides needing a net present value calculation based on this data for the next board meeting, he also needs to know the figure for the project's duration to indicate the board how returns for the project will be spread over time. Failure of launch of the millant. Finance director would also like some simple analysis based on the uh, possibility that the marketing expenditure is not effective and the launch fails as he feels that the product's price may be too high. He has suggested that there's a 15% chance that Milan will have a negative cash flow for year one of this much or more. This is just their doubt. He would like to know by what percentage. So this is their talk about sensitivity analysis. We saw in the requirement they asked how much a selling price has to what increase before a net present value falls to zero right so he would like to know by what percentage the selling price would be reduced or increased to result in the investment having a zero net present value assuming demand remain the same assuming demand remain the same that means your volume sales volume will be same only the sales price will change assessment of new products right uh, fun Hurst Company's last board meetings discussed another possible new product, the Racton, and the finance director presented a range of financial data relating to this product, including the results of net present value and payback evaluations. One of the non executive director, who is not a qualified accountant, stated that they would find it difficult to see the significance of the different items of financial data. The understanding was that Furnace Company merely had to ensure that the investment had a positive net present value and shareholders were bound to be satisfied with it as it would maximize their wealth in the long term. Finance director commented that in reality, some shareholders looked at the performance of the investments which Furnace Company made over the short term, whereas some were more concerned with the long term. The financial data he presented to the board meetings included both short and long term measures. So this is about the last requirement which they are talking. Right. So now let's quickly go to the net present value we have to calculate. So we have to make a cash flow. Right. What is our starting point? Our starting point is sales. Right. We first have to start with the sales. Right. I have not included that answer here. I am going to do the working by myself and show you. But the theory part and all, I have copy pasted the answer. So we'll go through that later. First, we are going to start with the calculation. Right. So I'm going to start with my first item sales revenue always this will be your first item this is how you have to start that's why i want to do it by myself and show you sales revenue i'm going to put working one i'm going to do a working from this because we have to multiply the volume by the cost and inflate it and also 
it increases in different years so for different years we have to find the sales revenue for now i will keep it i'm going to write all the years for how many years four years starting with zero don't forget about that right year one year two right year three year four like this i'm going to have a table please use uh, rulers in your exam and all right here i am not neat and all these figures right will be here i'm writing it dollar in thousands i'm going to drop down the three thousands so all you have to put like that for all all the years right and then sales revenue i'm going to put in working one variable cost next is variable cost for this i'm going to put second working this also requires a working right you have to deduct your variable cost so sales minus variable cost is what is your contribution that's your contribution then we have one of expenditure that was your marketing expenditure right then we have our fixed cost this does not require you just have to inflate it right then we have our tax allowable depreciation once you start doing this in a repetitive basis different questions this then you will know the format and all how the table starts what figure and all right also known as tad this is let's this i will put under working three always like this you have to refer which working are referring right always keep your main answer main table clean you are not going to do any workings there you are going to do the working somewhere else from there the main answer only you are putting here right and then comes your taxable profits right or losses if it's loss it's in bracket that's why i put bracket right from this taxable profit you are going to deduct your tax my lines are not straight because i'm not using ruler but you have to use ruler right tax is how much what is the percentage of tax 25 percent once you deduct tax right remember to find the cash flows you need to add back tax allowable depreciation only for finding tax right because you are deducting tax allowable depreciation right from your profit why because you because of those tax allowable depreciation you are going you want to reduce your profit in short you want to reduce your tax right you are going to pay tax in that reduced profit but when it comes to cash flow you have to add back that tax allowable depreciation always you have to add back your tax allowable depreciation to find the cash flows you deduct tax allowable depreciation first to find your taxable profit on that you are going to pay tax but when you have to find the cash flow after tax again you have to add back the tax allowable depreciation don't forget that right you might be thinking what is the use of adding back uh, uh, first subtracting and again adding back there is a difference it changes your tax taxable profit it changes your tax right even though the fact is it will be same whether you add and back but there's a difference your taxable profit will be higher your tax will be higher now you have to add right add back always you have to add back 
back syllable depreciation let me write the short form tad after you add back what i'm getting is what i'm getting always keep one whole page for answering this type of question where you have to find the net present value just see how i'm extending the line don't do this keep don't be so uh, you know just keep half a line first you are drawing again you are drawing don't do that just keep one whole page for your net present value calculation itself you need one whole page right not more than that but at least even though you are just using half a page but still keep one page for that calculation from the second page on you can do your workings and all right so that that is known as your cash flows after tax you have to give label to each right and then comes your initial investment then comes your working capital this is a standard format right this table this this is how always you will be doing your initial investment like this only first sales then cost then fixed cost then tax allowable depreciation you will deduct you will get profit taxable profit deduct tax again add taxable profit then comes your initial investment working capital disc cash flows then your discount then you find the present value right then after that you see how many times i have to extend this line so after working capital is your cash flows right then comes your discount factor it is given as 11% so how are you going to find 11% the table is there right from the table itself you can find out the table will be given to you the discount table of 11% and then the present values right for the one year, so first year second year third year fourth year 11% that discount factor table you have to use and then we are getting the present values or pv can tell then net present value if you write npv also in the exam rather than writing net present value it is acceptable right so now i have this table where i have to fill just fill it right so first i'm going to start with the sales revenue so i'm going to do on a separate page a working right i'm going to take you through the marking scheme later how the marks are divided and all but first i'm going to do the working now my workings will be here on this side so that is easy for me to refer to this side right working one sales revenue i'm going to put heading like this always put the number correct number which you are using in the main table for working also you have to use here if you see i use w1 so here also i have to use w1 only don't put something else there and sales revenue please label it just don't start in working okay so now i have to find for 1 2 3 4 four years first year what was my volume sales volume from the case study please check 132 500 multiply by what was my initial selling price it is 100 in year 1 i'm not going to inflate it right and the final answer i'm going to put in the table then second year it will be 132 500 multiply by 100 the selling price but this selling price will be it will increase by 5% 5% so again i'm going to put multiply by 1.05 because it will increase by 5% this 100 the selling price and then i'm going to inflate it how much was the inflation in year from year 2 it was 1.2 it was 20% third year when i come again i'm going to do this here also i'm going to do this multiply by 100 multiply by 100 now when i do 
right it will be 1.05 to the power 2 here it will be 1.5 to the power 3 because I'm going to multiply 1.05 multiply by 1 point again one multiply by 5% first I'm taking 5% uh, increase on that 100 in year 2 in the third year again I am taking 5% that's why this is 2 power 2 and then this is power the, your power will keep increasing right this is power 1 then 2 then 3 right that's how it works and here it will be 1.2 why I know third year is 30% inflation but you have to but this figure this third year is based on this second year's figure only right first you have to inflate that 20 percent you have to use the previous year's figure and then you have to take 30 percent on that 1.3 so when you do here also it will be same because third and fourth year is 30 percent right now let let me put the answers here the answers in the table I'm not going to deal in zeros. The zeros are up here. So I'm not going to put all the zeros. I'm just going to put here 13 to 50. That means it is 13,250,000 only if I read it like that. But the, I'm not dealing. I'm eliminating, eliminating the three zeros, right? I'm sorry, it's not here. This is year zero. Year one starts from here, year one. So it will be here. See? This is one of the mistakes which candidates could do. You could go and write in the wrong year, thinking that it starts from year one. You could write, go and write in the first column. Please don't do this mistake. First column is year zero. We are not going to do any sales there. It starts from year one. Year zero is for your initial investment and working capital only. Right? And next year it will be 16, 1695. Then third year it will be. Please check by yourself these answers, okay? You should know how to get the answers more than just getting the correct answer. Now I'm going to go to the variable cost, right? For variable cost also, working to. Variable cost is also exactly same. The only difference is the variable cost per unit. Only that is changed. Rest all is same. Like the sales revenue so this will be my working to which is labeled as variable cost please label your workings very important again i'm going to put like this consistency be consistent year one two three and four so it is variable cost per unit so what was the sales volume right here also it will be same here also it will be same here also it will be same multiply multiply variable cost per unit for the first year was 43.68 that's it you're not going to do anything you're not going to inflate it then you have to multiply this by 1.05 y it will increase by 5 percent the 20 percent is the inflation then it will be like this To the power 2 to the power 3 right multiply by 1.3 multiply by 1.3 oh first you have to multiply by 1.2 that's correct and then 1.3 and 1.3 right then the answer i'm going to put in the table now i'm going to see how my table is very neat just the sales revenue and the variable cost i'm not doing the workings here this needs to be deducted so it will be in the bracket five seven eight eight seven two nine two nine nine five four i'm just going to eliminate uh keep out the three zeros right so that i don't have to deal with big numbers and i don't confuse myself now contribution is just deduct uh, sales minus variable cost so your contribution will be 7462 9403 12835 and
13476 now what i have to do marketing expenditure it was in the end of year one it is a one of expenditure that means only one year yeah end of year one so it will be here deduction that's it it is not repeated for all the year then comes the fixed cost fixed cost in year one was 900 only but this will be inflated by 20 percent right 20 percent no no it's not 20 percent the inflation rate what was the inflation rate for fixed cost it was uh, the rate of inflation yeah it is four percent and then five percent right so five percent only first year you are not going to inflate it it will just be five percent you have to inflate it so it will be 945 right on this 945 again you are inflating it by five percent that means 945 multiplied by 1.05 you are getting rounded up right it is 992.25 so i will take as 992 i don't want to deal with decimal you can if you don't want to deal with decimal and keep the number as a whole number you are free to do that also right but if you want to do work accurately in decimal that is also acceptable but i prefer i my recommendation and my advice is better to deal with the round numbers round it up so this 992 multiply by again 5% 1.05 is 104 1.6 but i will round up to 1042 of course it's in bracket it's a deduction tax allowable depreciation working 3 okay i need to go to my tax allowable depreciation working 3 right so here I'm going to put working three TAD tax allowable depreciation. Right, this also I'm going to not deal in zeros. Right, and then here it's a reducing balance basis needs a working. First, first year, okay. I'm going to write the year here one. So tax allowable depreciation TAD. What was the initial cost of the non-current asset? It was sixteen thousand. It is sixteen million, but I'm not going to deal with the zero. So sixteen thousand only. Tax allowable depreciation. What is tax allowable depreciation? What was the percentage of tax allowable depreciation? It is twenty percent. I will keep twenty percent. Twenty percent on this sixteen thousand, which is how much? Three thousand two hundred. This needs to be deducted from the cost. So reducing balance basis, right? Then it comes to the balance is twelve thousand eight hundred. On this again, you have to find twenty percent. So two year two TAD again twenty percent. You need to find on this twelve eight hundred. It is two five six zero. You see how easy it becomes if you do working. Imagine if you didn't do working and you try to do all this calculation in your calculator. This is 2560. I will try to. Yes, now it's easy. Two five six zero deduct. Then I'm having now ten two forty. On this again, third year TAD. Again twenty percent I find out. Twenty percent on ten two four. It's two zero four eight eight one nine two eight one nine two. Now what are you going to do? Are you going to find 20% on 8192? 
because you are coming in the end of the year four and in the year four you are not having a tax allowable depreciation remember that you don't have to find 20 percent most of the candidate first three years you will be able to do it but what happens mistake where you do is in the fourth year this is why i'm taking you through this question by myself i want to work it by myself and show you where the mistake is i'm not showing you that printed answer so fourth is not tax allowable depreciation they told clearly balancing allowance even if they don't tell you that it's a balancing allowance it is a balancing allowance i will tell you how later but first this is 8192 they told at the end of the project net realizable value is zero what does it mean what will be the balancing allowance then the figure we have now is 8192 and it has to be zero that means your balancing allowance has to be 8192 only for it to be zero right now before i put this numbers in the table now i will tell you why why there's a balancing allowance right just check this it is 20% 20% 20% 20% 20% 60% and if you put in the fourth year also it will be total 80% right 20% for four years it will be total 80% total is not coming to 100% it is not coming to 100% so if something is not coming to 100% if it it's coming to 80% right where will that 20% difference go so you cannot have a tax allowable depreciation in the fourth year also you cannot have because at the end it has to be zero at the end it has to be zero that means you add all your tax allowable depreciation at the end you should get this 16000 let's do this and check 3200 plus 2560 plus 2048 plus 8192 the balancing allowance are you getting 16000 you should get 16000 there is another way of finding this out the 16000 because you don't know what is your balancing allowance let's say you don't know what uh, this 8192 you just know your total is 8192 up to now but you don't know how much is your balancing allowance it's easy 16000 was your cost minus 3200 plus 2560 plus 2048 up to now the balance is your balancing allowance which will be 8192 only right but let's say now that i have changed the rate right this is i'm giving you an additional example here so that later in the future it will help you there are some questions like that also so that you don't get confused and you know how to work out let's say i changed the percentage of tax allowable depreciation to 25% this is not in your working let's say now the ted is 25% now for all the four years i can work out 25 25 25 25 100% so i don't need a balancing allowance we'll see how 16000 what is the 25% of 16000 in year 1 it is 2 it is 4000 only 4000 i deduct i'm getting 12% on this 12% again i'm finding 25% i will get 3000 3000 i deduct now i'm having 9 9000 year 3 how much i have to get 25% on 9000 it will be 2250 now it's 6750 find 25% on this 6750 right Oh no! This is reducing balance basis, right? Yeah. Um, I'm so, so sorry. If it was for straight line, I'm sorry. If this twenty percent is now for the straight line basis, you have to find the twenty percent on sixteen thousand. That will be three thousand two hundred for 
all the three years for all the three years one two and three it will be three thousand two hundred if it was a straight line basis three thousand two hundred and three thousand two hundred but the fourth year it will be you add all those three point two three point two three point two and deduct it with sixteen thousand the balance is your balancing allowance that's how you get right But there are situations when your tax allowable depreciation completely wipes out your 16,000. You automatically get zero at the end, right? We'll do some questions there. We have some questions. So now I'm going to put the balance in the tax allowable depreciation in my table, right? When I put my tax allowable depreciation, what I have to take care of is most of you go and put this value. 12,800, 10, 240. No, you have to put this one, the one in the bracket, 3,200, 2,500, 8,192. These are the balances which you have to put in the tax allowable depreciation. The one in the bracket, right? So first here it is, 3,200, it will be deducted. Then we have 2,560, again it will be deducted. You just see how it kept reducing and suddenly it will be 8,192. If you add all this four taxable depreciation, it has to be 16,000 always in all the scenario, right? Now I'm getting my tax allowable, tax allowable profit. So my tax allowable profit will be 1862-5898-9795, this is 9, and 4242. Now I have to deduct my tax 25% on the tax taxable profit. So 25% on 1862 will be 466, 1475, 2449, 1061. And add back the taxable depreciation again. 3200, 2560, 2048. 8192 so now i'm getting my i'm getting my cash flows after tax four five nine six six nine eight three nine three nine four and eleven three seven three now initial investment in year zero don't go and put it under year one it is sixteen thousand so deduction your working capital initially 1025 now when you work for your working capital how are you going to do it there was a statement about working capital let's go and read it again right it was in this the working capital will be increased annually at the start of each of year 24 by the inflation rate. By the inflation rate, it will increase from year 2 to 4. So what is the inflation from year 2 to 4? It is 5%. Right? It is 5%. So, how much it will be in year 1? I'm giving you some time to work out. Right? It is 4%. Inflation rate is 4% in year 1. You are not multiplying 1.04 by 1.025, right? Then this amount in year 1 will become very, it will become higher than 1.025. It cannot be higher than 1.025. Right? You just have to multiply. I'm showing you here. Working capital. Year one. How much was it? One zero two five multiplied by zero point zero four. You you are increasing it by four percent. You will get forty one. Year two. How much? How much to get in year two? Year two to year five. The inflation is. Inflation is 5% then. How? 
how are you going to do it this is a little this needs a little uh, there's a trick here right it's so not so easy and not so straightforward Come on, I'm giving you one to two minutes for the second year. Right? How are you going to increase it? Right? okay so maybe some of you must have found it out right and some of you are still struggling to get for the second year so the second year is like this one zero two five you have in initial and then 41 thus 41 from the previous year you are adding it and then after you add one zero six six now your total working capital is this on this you are taking five percent because for the second year it is five percent right so you are getting 53.3 just take it as 53 so third year when you go what you have to do now again you have to add this 53 also to this one 1066 plus 53 and then you have to multiply this by 0.05 You shall get 50 it is 55.95 but i will round up to 56 right and when you come to the fourth year be aware you are not doing it fourth year you are recovering all your working capital you are recovering your working capital what do you have to do just add all your working capital year zero year zero is what 1025 so basically you are adding 1025 from year 0, year 1 it is 41, year 2 it is 53, year 3 it is 56 and the total is 1175. This you are recovering it will be in positive in year 4. I am going to do it in the table. Put these numbers in the table. What's happening? Okay, so finally I came to my working capital because working capital initially you are investing it so year one it is 41 this i will be deducting then it's 53 this i'll be deducting then it is 56 and finally i'm recovering all this addition of this is 1175 it will be in positive and now after all this i can get my work cash flows right total cash flow this 17025 in negative then four all these are in flows six nine three zero nine three three eight twelve five four eight now what i have to do is i have to use the discount factor at 11 percent right from the table you can get the values but i'm putting the values here up to three decimal places right 
you shall be knowing how to find the discount factor on your own without using the table also being right this has been taught to you in f9 so now you're discounting it and your present values will be 17025 this will be same right 4104 5627 6826 and finally we have 8269 add all and on present value is in positive wow that's a good good sign so finally we have got our net present value this in positive that means so what should we say right we should write this one line just writing net present value in positive is not enough you need to write the sentence net present value is positive so what happens which indicates that the project is financially acceptable or the project should be undertaken anything you can write the project should be undertaken or you can write the project is financially acceptable right now we are not done with it we have to find one more one more calculation what is it it is your duration Your duration has to be found. How will you find your duration? What are the present value? You need your present value of inflows to find duration. So your present value is your net present value plus your initial investment. Because you have deducted your initial investment from the present value. So you are adding your net present value with initial value to get your present value. Or in short, you can add all this year one to year four present values right so what was your net present value 7801 plus 17025 that was your initial investment you are getting how much 24826 right now there are two ways of finding this. I'm going to show you both the ways. Now it's up to you. You can use any method. But in the book, we have been taught the second method. But let but I'm going to teach you both the method. Right? This is your present value, right? So I'm going to start like this year. One, two, year zero is not needed. What was my present value? In dollar thousands. I'm not going to. So from the table up, you can see 4104, 5627, 6826, and 8269. Then I have my present value into the year. Multiply by the year. So 4104 uh, multiplied by 1 is 4104 only. 5627 into 2. You have to multiply your present value by the number of year. This will be 2478 and finally 33076. Now, how I'm getting my duration? Duration will be equal to add all 41. This is a little easier method, right? 4104 plus 11254. Plus two zero four seven eight plus thirty three zero seven six. After you add all divided by what is the present value of inflows two four eight two six. It is this one, right? That has to be a denominator. So the answer I'm getting is two point seven eight years. What does it mean? It means I'm getting my cash back in 2.78 years and the duration is for 4 years or uh, the, the project. So that's a good sign. Right? 
now i'm going to write also what does it mean you need to write it also calculate remember they told calculate and write discuss so i'm going to write it project duration is a measure of average time over which this project delivers its value right so example it is the equal amount of a project equal amount of a project that delivers 100% of its present value cash inflows in 2.78 years time right i'm not writing the sentence but you can write it okay it delivers its present value the cash inflows in 2.78 years time now the alternative calculation you can use any one of them the answer you will get the same only only the way of doing is different so alternative calculation is here again 1 2 3 4 right the present value i'm going to write same old till here it is same the difference comes in the second line that is percentage of total present value that means what was your total present value it was 2 3 something 2 4 8 2 6 8 so if you want to get for the first year let's say it is 4 1 0 4 out of 2 4 8 2 6 it will be 16.5 percent so like that likewise you have to find for the other years also you are just finding the percentage right 27.5 percent and 33 finally it has to be if you add all four it has to be 100 percent now the duration what was the year first year 1.1 multiply by percentage 0.165 add second year 2 multiply by 0.227 that is your percentage so the year this times third year multiply by 27.5 percent 0.275 plus 4 multiply by 0.333 and finally i'm going to get 2.78 years i am getting the same answer under both right it's up to you whatever method you want to use now let's go to part b before i go to part b let me show you the marking scheme for part a so if you see here investment appraisal okay time management is very important in this type of question by the way because when i did this question back in june i think june uh, 2019 uh, yeah june 2019 i did afm so the back then i got this type of question okay and it has lot of workings to do it's very lengthy so most of the time this question comes in your 50 marks question right it can come in your 25 marks question also so if it comes in your 50 marks question then you have a plenty of work to do right usually this type of questions has a plenty of work to do you will never get it very easy very small you will get such lengthy calculation so it's important that you be you are ahead with time you are in line with the time because i i was short of time i ran behind time so what i did when i did this question i'm telling you my experience now when i get this type of question two of my things were wrong here first of all my working capital i know it was clearly wrong and uh, i think one of some item was there some cost item it went wrong because when i inflated it i saw that it's wrong i put some others uh, inflation into some other thing it's easy right to get confused like that because uh, especially if you are getting two three items like sales and two three cost and for each cost and your sales they inflate by different amounts right then inflation is different in that case is very easy for you to get confused so when when i became aware when did i know this 
after I completed the table and I got my net present value, I know I was wrong. But guess what did I do? If I wanted, I could have cut back and tried to change it, do the table again from the scratch. But what would happen is I will waste time and I know my next question is risk management. I saw my next question. This is what happens that I always tell that first 15 minutes, right out of three or 15 minutes, 15 minutes, the first 15 minutes when you get the paper, read your all the, uh, go through your whole paper. That will release your tension. You know what is there coming up next. So in your mind, you know that if I'm not able to handle this question, what is my next question? What I did in first 15 minutes, I know my next question was risk management question. And I know that I could pretty do well in that question. And after that, I had reconstructions also. And I know both I can do it. Right. I was I was not struggling, but I was short of time. I know it's wrong. And I know that based on that, whatever my conclusion will be, recommendation will be, it will be wrong. But I didn't do what most of the students do. They try to go and do it from scratch. They try to cut everything or they try to write in a new page again. I didn't do that. I know in spite of knowing that I made a mistake there, I went ahead. With that information, with that numbers, which whatever number I got for net present value, with that I wrote my conclusion. I gave my advice also. I wrote my assumptions and I went to the next question because next question is risk management. I cannot lose it at any cost. If I wasted my time here doing it from scratch, it takes a lot of time by the way. Even though it looks easy that I will do in five minutes the whole table and all. No, it takes a lot of time. Still, it requires a lot of time. And those time I would have. I, I prefer spending those time in my risk management chapter and hence my result. I passed with 60% in AFM in first attempt. Right in my class, there were I think around. Uh, I don't I don't remember, but I think it was around 12 or 15 students in my class out of those 12, 15 students. Only two students passed AFM in first attempt, right? One was one girl and me, myself. So only both of us passed AFM in first attempt. So just imagine, just imagine the situation now. If you were, if any one of us will be in that situation, we would be like panicking. We'd be like, oh my God, but still I know that I will pass the paper. Even I know that I missed, made a mistake there. I was very clear I made a mistake there. My numbers are wrong. I was very confident I will pass this paper and I did with 60%. That's more shocking when my marks came. I was at least expecting 50, 51 like that, but passing with 60% in AFM in first attempt is not a joke. I didn't pass because I worked more harder than others. I didn't pass because I have some extra something, extra knowledge or something. I passed that day because of the techniques which I applied under that exam scenario. So you always have to be prepared for all these uncertainties, for all this mishap which could happen to you. You could be very intelligent in the class, right? You could be, you could learn all the books, you could memorize all the formulas, but still you can make a mistake. There will be something which will not be in your control. Things can go against you. Things can go against your hand and you don't know also. That time you should not panic. That time you should be calm. You should calm yourself and decide at that moment what are you going to do are you going to go to the next one are you going to stick with get stuck never get stuck in anywhere in afm i repeat this never get stuck anywhere in afm keep going ahead 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 whatever it is even if it's wrong it's wrong let it be right so this is this has happened to me so i can tell you this with guarantee you will pass the older thing is you have to keep your mind calm in those situations. I know it's very easy for you to get angry with yourself. You know, how can I make this mistake? I cannot make. Don't lose your marks. Don't lose waste time trying to be perfect. That is the biggest tip I can give you. Never do that. I never try to be perfect. But what I try is I try to complete the paper, the whole paper. With whatever time I have, I try to do the maximum, but I never try to be perfect. I know some, there are some areas where I go wrong, but still there are some areas where I perform really well. So it balances somehow, right? So that's the tip. Okay. And so here, okay. So that's what they're talking about. This type of question, you need to calculate tax level depreciation, working capital, inflation, all those things is time consuming. Easy marks is part B and C. Part B sensitivity analysis, five marks, C is again. 
theory marks, right? So, yeah, it asked for the sensitivity, okay. And part C, required a discussion of meaning and significance of net present value, whether short-term measures were also important. So here, what you have to identify is risk and uncertainty in investment appraisal. Now we'll see how the marks has been divided, the 15 marks, two marks for sales revenue, right? Why two marks? Why two marks? Because in sales revenue, you have to do a lot of calculations. That's why for that working, you are getting one for working, one for final answer. Whenever you have some working, some figures which needs to do, needs to be changed. Where you have a lot of working, you will get two marks. Variable cost also two marks. Yes, that also has to be inflated and changed from year to year. Fixed cost is one mark only because you are just inflating. That's it. You are not, it does not have so much of working. Tax allowable depreciation is two working. Again, it has a working. Tax payable is just one, just tax on that 25%. Working capital. So for each, you are getting marks starting from sales, then variable, then fix, then tax allowable, then your tax payable. Working capital has two marks. This requires working. Net present value, only one mark. Only one mark. So just don't get stuck with the final answer one mark, one mark, one mark. Think about those workings which you did. Right? Comment on the net present value is one mark. I told you that one line you need to write. The net present value is positive. Hence, the project is financially acceptable or financially viable. If the net present value is negative, you have to write the net present value is negative. Hence, the project is rejected or you should not go, go ahead with the investment or the project. You have to write this one sentence. If you don't write it, you are losing one mark. You cannot attempt to lose even one mark in ACCA. All the candidates who failed at 49, they know the pain. They know the importance of that one mark. Ask those candidates who failed in 49, what is the importance of one mark? So never think anything that, okay, it's just one mark. It will not impact me so much. Oh, confidence is good, but overconfidence is not good. You should never be overconfident in any area. Even in your strongest area where you are very good, trust me, those were the areas where I struggled. And the areas which was hard for me when I was studying and all those were the areas where I performed well in my exam. So trust me on this when I'm saying this. Never be confident with your strengths. But you should not be too nervous also when you, are, when you have weaknesses in some area. You still have to time. So duration calculation is two marks again. Comment on duration is one mark. You see, you, you calculate, you comment. You calculate, you comment. Marks are there. Part B, reduction in selling price. Of course, when selling price reduces all your net present value can be negative. It is common sense, right? And then, it depends on the type of good though. If you increase your selling price and then your demand changes. But here, selling price has to reduce for your net present value to be negative. Why is that? Because your volume, demand, they told is same. Volume is not going to change. So selling price has to reduce because your net present value is positive, right? So it's a reduction in selling price, three marks. Discussion is two to three marks. So now we are going to do uh, work on B, right? Part B, I didn't copy paste the answer, right? I already copy pasted the answer of part C. Reduction in selling price. You need to know. They told you clearly whether it's okay. I will take you to that uh, requirement where they told. Okay. Next question is 14, but now we are not solving 14. So you can forget about it. Uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yes. He would like to know by what percentage the selling price could reduce or increased. It could be increased. It could be reduced. But in this conditions, because the demand remained the same, it has to reduce. You have to be very quick like this to analyze it, right? You cannot waste 10, five minutes to think what's happening to the sales price. The more you practice, the more faster you will be in your exam day, right? Basically your exam practice, the revision kit practice, your mocks, your this thing is to make you faster in your exam day, not to get the correct answer, not to get those answers as it is. You, you can get wrong, but the main thing is you will be on time. So first I'm going to write it. You have to write this reduction or increase. It's a reduction in selling price. How much now I'm going to work out.
discounted revenue cash flows. Right? How much should be my discounted? We want to find net present value is zero. So for that, we have to find discounted revenue cash flows. How much should be my cash flows? Right? For that, right? What was my sales volume? 13,250. Right? If you forgot your sales volume, go up and check. You can always go up and check your sales revenue. This one, first one, right? So you can check your sales revenue from the cash flow itself. 13,250, 16, 16, 9, 5, 22, 7, 8, 9, 23, 9, 2, exactly you have to take those only. Right? You are multiplying this by what? What was the tax rate? Tax rate is 25%. That means after tax, it will be 0 0.75. Multiply by discounting factor first year 11%, 0 0.901. Right, add this with the second year, so it will be same only. Re sales revenue for the second year is 1695 multiplied by again tax is 25%, and discount factor is 8. Right, plus third year plus 22789 multiply by 0.5 multiply by discount factor. Discount factor also you can take from the table above. 23,928 multiply by 0 0.5 because after tax and discount factor is so equal. I'm getting how much? Dollar. 43,441,000. Now, what I'm going to do? Reduction in selling price. How to do sensitivity analysis? Make sure that you know that. Reduction in selling price. Same old reduction. We are doing sensitivity analysis only. How sensitive selling price is to the net present value. So what was your net present value? The formula for sensitivity analysis. Net present value divided by your discounted revenue cash flows. What is your discounted revenue cash flows now? 43,441. I'm cutting out the three zeros. Right? Because when you check your net present value, I will take you. Sorry. 701 in thousands. Or if you want, you can write the in thousands also, so that you don't get confused. This, if you are putting thousands, please make sure this is another area where candidates go wrong. If you are putting zeros in one place, make sure that in the other place also you put zeros. Otherwise, what happens is it will become seven eight zero one divided by forty three four four one triple zero. Then your answer will be totally wrong. So if you are putting the three, if you are not putting the three zeros in the net present value, you are putting keeping as seven eight zero one. You're down also, you have to eliminate the three zeros. You have to keep it as 43441. But if you're putting the zeros in the net present value, down also you have to keep. Right? Don't forget about the zeros. Your zeros can make a big difference in your answer. And then it comes as round up. Right? If you don't want to work in decimal, round it up 18%. So that means selling price has to reduce by how much? 18%. 18%. Now let me take you to the answer. Right? What they have written here. Discussion. For that discussion, you are getting 2 to 3 months. Right? So here is the discussion. Furnace company. I will uh, zoom it. Right? Finance company would appear to have some scope to reduce the prices in order to guarantee the success of the product launch. It would be useful to know whether the finance writer's view on the success of the product would change if the product was launched at a lower price. There may be scope to launch at a price which is more than 18% lower than the planned launch price and increase the sales price subsequently, uh, subsequently by more than the rate of inflation if the launch is a success. Right? If the launch is success, they can increase the sales price even more than the inflation. 
if the directors are unwilling to reduce the price then their decision will depend on whether they are willing to consider other ways of mitigating a failed launch so what happens all we are doing this reducing is for to mitigate from a failed launch right so if they don't want to reduce price they have to find some other ways of mitigating that failed launch or take a chance that the product will make a loss and be abundant they will they will take into account both the probability please make sure that they're using this from the case study they have told you somewhere that there's a 15 percent chance of making a loss of 1 million or more this is not a joke it's a very big amount so there's a probability if they don't mitigate the risk of launch, uh, mitigating a failed launch then this could be a big loss 15% loss probability of 15% loss and at least 1 million but possibly higher this could be even higher than this right so presumably the finance director's assessment of the probability of a loss is based more on doubts this probability of loss they are saying that 15% is based more on doubts about the demand level rather than the level of cost see demand level is something which you cannot control right it's harder for you to control the demand how uh, how can you control the demand of your customer but the cost you can control right that's what they are doing here the selling price they can change adjust but the demand value they, are, they cannot change so as cost should be controllable possibly the directors may consider a smaller scale launch to test the market but then finance company will still be left with expensive facilities if the product were abundant exactly so the decision may therefore depend on what alternative users could be made of the new facilities this type of discussion you need to bring out right and path c what was path c again we'll read the requirements because by the time what happens is when you do the first requirement when you start answering first requirement i always tell you the follow this technique is always reread your requirements i know first you have read it again okay, read it there is no harm in reading it again you are saving yourself you might have interpreted the requirement when you read first in a different way but now when you are reading it again you will understand it better right rather than doing something in a wrong way and coming to know it later and trying to change it uh, understand it first time itself the better you understand the better your answers will be the quality of your answers so the requirement c is okay discuss the non-executive understanding of the net present value so they told that net present value is for short term or something like that they have told you in this this last paragraph and explain the importance of other measures in providing data so basically we are talking about risk and uncertainty and also about other measures other than net present value there are so many other investment appraisal like duration and project duration all these things we can talk about here in this part c how is the marks given let's see that also significance of net present value one to four shareholders attitude to longer term and short term two to three time frame measures you know to talk about time frame because they're talking about long and short term right uh, okay before i go to okay path c yeah this one that was a quite a big answer okay so the non-executive director has highlighted the importance of long-term maximization of shareholders wealth net present value is the most important indicator of whether an investment is likely to do that because increasing net present value positive net present value means what maximization of shareholders wealth only so that's what they are saying however the assessment of the investments using net present value has to be modified if the company is undertaking a number of different investments and capital is rationed how you see how they are talking about rationing of capital yes it is true we say that if a project is uh, having a positive net present value please accept the project under but what about if there are more than one project it's not possible right that there are five projects out of five four pro all the five projects are showing positive net present value can you can you undertake all the five projects right if you have finance and all unlimited finance and all yes you could do that but practically if you think no one has that unlimited finance you will have a limitation right limited finance so you will not be having that much of finance to undertake all the five investments there will be a problem there will be a capital rationing there so because of that it's not possible that even though the project is having the positive net present value two three you cannot take undertake all you can only take one or two right so this just using net present value as an investment appraisal it has to be modified 
it is not necessarily the case that the investments with the highest net present value will be chosen as accountant as account has to be taken of the amount of the capital invested as well you also need to see how much capital you can invest not just the one with the highest net present value maybe you have two projects one is having the highest net present value the other one is also having a positive net present value but not so high compared to first project but so we cannot say that the company should uh, in this situation both are having positive net present value we cannot tell the company that they should choose the one with the highest net present value why is that maybe it is too uh maybe the finance is too huge maybe the company might not be able to afford that right they might not have the finance required now maybe they have to take loans or so many other issues are there so maybe they might be more comfortable with the second project right still there will be a maximization of shareholders wealth because both the project are positive net present value only however investors are not necessarily concerned solely with the long term yes it is not true that they are always concerned with the long term also they are concerned with the short term also they are also concerned about short term indicators such as annual dividend which the company can sustain they may be concerned if the company's investment portfolio is weighted towards projects which will produce good long term returns but limited return in the near future okay risk will also influence you have to talk about risk risk will also influence the shareholders view they may prefer investments where a higher proportion of returns are made in the shorter term exactly we want to make the as much return as possible in the short term why because in the short term risk is less but in the long term there's a higher risk right so if they feel that the long term returns are much more uncertain if they feel that if i get the return tomorrow it's very uncertain whether i will get that return tomorrow or not it's risky they prefer that they get in the short term right if that return is uncertain so the net present value calcula uh, calculation itself discounts long term cash flows more than the short term cash flows right if you see some day you will see that in the calculation the net present value discounts long term cash flows more than the short term cash flows why is that why is that maybe we can go to that table and see on net present value table to understand this just check your uh, amount is reducing and reducing right so what happens your discounted factor is increasing right but here your cash flow is increasing that's why this is not a suitable table your cash flow is increasing imagine if your cash flow was same for all the years and then you use a discount factor right now we can maybe we can do some uh, and check now now itself okay we'll do that but first we'll read what's uh, more is here okay we'll read this like uh, we'll do this so the payback method shows now they are talking about the payback method also shows how long an investment will take to generate enough returns to pay back as investments it favors investments which pay back quickly of course although it fails to take into account longer term cash flows after the payback period so after the payback period they ignore the cash flows duration is a better method now you see how they are talking about different measure other than adjusted uh, sorry net present value they are talking about payback method they are talking about duration they are talking about risk they are talking about uncertainty duration is a better measure measure of distribution of cash flows although it may be less easy for shareholders to understand less easy for shareholders to understand duration is not very easy for you users to understand usually but when we say payback it's easy we know that we are paid back by this much when we say net present value it's easy we know positive and negative net present value but duration is something shareholders uh, don't understand very easily so that with this we are done with question 13 right question 14 is also we have to calculate vac right and capital structure and all those things so it's a very good question also we have in part c i can see var value at risk so right 
and most of the straightforward discussions brought forward knowledge from AFM I can see here so we are going to do all those calculations of beta equity beta asset beta all those stuff so don't forget to watch my next video question 14 where I'll be solving question 14 okay and yes I told you that I'm going to show you this how net present value discounts long-term cash flows more okay okay let's see we are having 4,000 for one for two also 4,000 three also 4,000 four also 4,000 okay and the discount factor is just say 10 percent right it's easy to work with 10 percent 0 0.909 0 0.826 0 0.751 right it is 0 0.683 now find the cash flow multiply it you will be getting the highest amount here okay we'll see three six three six three three sorry three three zero four Three and we have 2732 just check what's happening to the cash flow here the cash flow is same just see what's happening from 3 is falling down right cash flow is falling down why is that returns are uncertain in the long term that's why they're discounting more and more the discounting more and more does not mean that discount factor is reducing or does not mean that they are discounting less no just check the discounted cash flow. It's reducing, reducing, reducing. They're discounting more. That's why it's reducing. Right? In the long term. As more as it's going towards, you know, from one year to one year, it's reducing, reducing, reducing. It will keep reducing older. There's more risk in the long term. It's more uncertain. But in the first year, if you see it is the highest return you are getting. So in the short term, you will get more returns. It will be discounting less. Right? And to find this discounting factor, right this you can use from the table also but if you want how to find out okay i will show you manually also it is 10 percent right it is just 0.1 okay one divided by 1.1 to the power one for the first year one divided by 1.1 because 10 percent to the power two for the second year one divided by 1.1 to the power three for the third year and 1.1 to the power four if you want this you can do it another another way right one divided by 1.1 is same as 1.1 to the power minus one this you can do in your calculator 1.1 to the power minus one it is same as this only just you are writing as a negative uh, powers 1.1 to the power minus two 1.1 to the power minus three 1.1 to the power minus was the same only you will get the same answer you want you can do that so that's how and keep it to the three decimal place right if you want i found i find that working on your own manually is more faster than going to the table and finding the numbers i never used table to find the discount factor i work it on my own only and trust me it's very fast but i don't i don't uh, promote that you have to do it manually don't use the table it is up to you right if you want you use it if you want to do it manually you can do it i have taught you both the ways it's better it's safe to know both the methods right okay so that's it for this video and don't forget to subscribe to my channel right i can see that increase right my subscriber by yesterday by today right in one day it increased to 10 from 159 to 170 so 11 subscribers wow thank you all of you right i can see that i want more and more subscribers so that more and more people get benefit out of this videos which i'm making with so much of my soul that i have put in this video to benefit all of you right so take care god bless you